Hey, what's going on guys? In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to replace your old receptacle with your new one for your electric car. It depends, of course, on the layout pattern of your electric plug. This one in particular is gonna be for the NEMA 1450R rated at 50 amps. And I will have this linked in the description box below the video with a couple different options. The reason I chose this one is this particular one accepts wire number four, number six, and number eight. Here is the back with the side screws here. Again, can accept very large wires. I went with white. The reason being is because I'm gonna be installing this at my parents' house, but eventually I will be installing this in my own home. And so I went with white instead of black, but they do offer a couple different colors. Again, in the description box below, you're gonna find the link. So the first thing you're gonna do, and forgive the messy garage. Again, this is my parents' house. We will be installing this. It's always nice to have a few options, especially if you're traveling from home for a quick charge if you're over for dinner, etc. So I have located the box. It's actually in my garage. Most of you guys will have the breaker box somewhere in either your garage or inside the house. If it is inside the house, running wire is gonna be a little bit more complicated but this is just gonna give you the overall synopsis. This is not a full how to install if there's drywall all over, but there are plenty of other videos explaining if you need to put in the proper breaker, et cetera. Luckily, my dad has already installed a 220 for his plasma cutter and welder. Down over here, we're gonna take a look at in just a second. So right off the bat, the plasma cutter and welder are running a 50 amp. As you can see here, this one is 50, this one is 20. The lower end amperage are for his compressor and the 50 amp, again, this is the one we got going on here. So again, there's two different receptacles. Let's go ahead and take a look. So number one, if you are installing an electric charger plug, I actually have another electric charger level two plug that only needs 30, so I wouldn't have to put in the 50 if I didn't want to but luckily it's already there. So he just has electrical conduit exterior. So this is a way to go if you are, let's say renting a property and you don't wanna bust through the drywall, etc. What you do is you get the metal conduit just with some brackets there, find your studs and just lay it on the outside of the drywall so you don't have to go through the interior portion and knock down drywall and all that stuff. It's actually a lot cheaper this way. So he's run metal tubing all the way down with different plugs. Again, he's a machine guy. He's a do-it-yourselfer. It's also quite messy, <laughs> but that's okay. So we've located our plugs right here. These are our 220s, and unfortunately, neither one of my electric charger level two plugs fit in these slots. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we have an old school voltage tester, but this thing is money and it works. This is your good old voltage tester. So we have our little prongs right here and what we're gonna do, number one, we don't wanna be electrocuted when we do cut the breaker. So we're gonna go ahead and test, make sure that that correct one is it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick these in the prongs. And as you can see here, that has juice to it. When we pull that out, that shows nothing there. All right, so that, is live right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the breaker box and cut that 50 amp breaker and test it again, make sure the power is off. All right, so here's the again, here's the 50. Let's go ahead and crank that off and go test it again. Our prongs are in there and we have nothing on the voltage meter. So that means that is the correct one. So now that we can go ahead and take off the faceplate and know that we're not gonna get electrocuted. Okay, so I have gone ahead and pulled off both of the faceplates here, exposing the wires. There's only two coming up to the top one, so that's not gonna be good. We don't wanna be running wires if we don't have to. It's kind of a pain, but we would have to run another wire all the way through the conduit to the breaker box. But good news is the lower one that we were looking at earlier has the ground. See the green wire there? So it looks like we have four hots and a neutral white. So this is great news for what I need to be doing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go obviously the neutral white up here by the silver screw. We're gonna do two blacks, one on each side, and then we'll go ahead because there's four in that receptacle box, we'll go ahead and cap off two of them and then put our ground in down below right here. Again, it is labeled right here. It says white, X and Y would be for your black ones, 
and G is gonna be green for ground. Back in the day, this is some newer construction. They want you to run a ground wire all the way from your breaker box down. Some people use the conduit for grounding purposes instead of running a wire, a whole separate wire to the breaker box. All right, so what he's done is he's run down the conduit He's run blacks here and the white and the green, obviously from the breaker box. But as you can see here, one of the blacks running from the breaker box down the conduit pipe is coming out here. One of the blacks is going in this side and one is going up into the top receptacle here. The other one is running over here from this side and then one wire is going up from that side to this one. So he's jumping one hot each coming in from that pipe to here, one hot each, and then one wire each on each side is then coming up into this one to power this receptacle up top here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up this one, and then I will have to take that little bracket off to be able to insert it in my new receptacle. So all there is on the back of the receptacle, the old one, you're gonna see those flathead screws. You're gonna go ahead and loosen those screws and pull out the wire. All right, if you did wanna wire it the same, the gauge holes look like they're the same so you would be able to with this particular one because this one accepts gauge four, six, and eight. And we're gonna go ahead and dust off that face plate and we're gonna go ahead and reuse that face plate as well. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and cut this wire so I can remove this. It's uh, crimped on there pretty tight and you're not gonna be able to remove that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the wire just below it. I'm gonna go ahead and strip it off and we're gonna go ahead and insert the green in the green of the back of the new receptor. So strip it off like that. That's what I've done to this. And I've inserted the green and then just screwed down this little here right on top of the wire. It's nice and tight. That's not gonna uh, fall out on me there. So we have the wires that are going up to this one. Unfortunately, this one is gonna be dead. I was struggling to put both wires in the new one. Definitely possible, but I just wanted to get this up and running. We might have to redo that. I rarely, I don't think I'll ever use a plasma cutter. Uh, personally, I mean, maybe, we'll never know, but I could always redo it. So if you wanna take the extra time, get both of them in there, bada bing, bada boom. But let's go ahead and look at what we have here. So again, one of the wires, doesn't matter which one, one of the black wires coming out of the conduit from the breaker box is gonna go in the either side, doesn't matter which one it is. We only have one black wire going in here. The second black wire coming out of the conduit from the breaker box is going to go into the other side here. Boom, boom. Our neutral white is going to go in the silver screw white and our ground we have already seen is nice and latched up tight. Double check those bolts. Make sure they're nice and tight so those wires do not come loose on you. And then I have capped the ends of these ones going up to this receptacle, just because I don't want any hot wires inside the box. So this is gonna prevent shorting or any electrocution or any type of thing like that. So these end caps are really nice. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and screw this one, put this one back in. And also something to keep in mind, the way you wired it. So my electric car charger, I need the ground down at the bottom because the cord length is only like one foot. And the way we're gonna mount it is on one of these beams here. So I need the ground facing that direction. So mount it with your wires, however you want to put it in. If you're gonna put, for some reason, if this is higher up and you want your electric charger mounted down here, know that the cord length so it, it's not plugged in and then looped really tight around and then going down so it's nice free hanging wire. It's gonna be plugged in and then it's gonna go up this direction, maybe off to the side a little bit the way the garage is set here. So understand that as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have used the provided screws for the 220 plug to screw it into my existing faceplate. So that's great. We saved some bucks right there. Again, the ground is on the bottom right here, so my cord will not get bent and really messed up there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the breaker box. We're going to flip the 50 breaker. We're going to test it, make sure we're nice and hot again. Everything is wired up correctly. All right, let's put juice back in the lines. Now that we are all screwed in there with no exposed wire. All right, voltage meter says we are hot. And voila, you are now charging level two, folks. Again, with this particular model, I don't have that far to go up into the box. So obviously this one is blocked, but if I wanted to use that one and it was wired correctly, 
unplug it, push it off to the side, plug that one in. But again, it's a kind of a short, it's about maybe a foot total, into the level two Clipper Creek box. We have our power light on, everything is testing out perfectly. I have it mounted on the stud. And now it is time to go to the car and test it. And we have success, folks. We are charging. My car says 240, so I assume that's either 220 or 240, but it says 240, so I'll take its word for it. We are juiced up, ready to roll. That is amazing. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Thumbs that up if it has helped you. Save some money, do it yourself. Stay tuned. I'm gonna be fully reviewing this one. I'm gonna be reviewing another one by the company, Clipper Creek, I will leave this level two charging station in the description box below has great reviews already. I will leave that link so you guys can read more about it. Pick one up yourself. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys on the next video. My name's Chris. Take care. Don't let the party stop, guys. Hit one of these videos. Continue to watch. And we'll see you soon.